Hello, and welcome back to the Very Real Estate Effect podcast, a show dedicated to real estate investing right here in Quebec. Hey, Dino, how is it going, man? I'm great. I'm fantastic. Second week in a row that I get to spend my Friday with you recording a podcast. And right before the podcast, I get an accepted offer on a property that we're going to do a flip. Music oh, to my ears. I love it. Congratulations. A quick flip. Uh, what's what's roughly the deal like? It's a property in uh, Granby. Needs a lot of love. So uh, we bought it uh, under market value and uh, we're going to give it a lot of love to be able to put a nice family in and after. Once it's tough. It's How about a, you, buddy? Me, things are going well. I mean, we're moving together with like the with the demolition in Verdun. We have the the land we have the accepted offer we've started to do like all the work and the due diligence and stuff we actually met with a contractor we met with a guy who's helping us on the financial model it's uh it's going well we've got quotes for evaluation and soil tests and blah 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 anyways fun, fun stuff at, so, at some point maybe I'll, you know we should do an episode just about that about hardcore due deal and <laughs> what, what to check um, so we are here for a fantastic episode. We have a wonderful guest. And before we welcome her, I just want to remind everyone, as usual, if you want to keep supporting us, please leave us a comment, a rating, share it with a friend who you think could benefit. And also we are doing more and more events and uh, we have more and more deals in the pipeline and there are ways for you to get involved. And so if any of those things are appealing to you, please go to our website, realestateeffect.ca and sign up for our newsletter so we can send you information regularly. And we will actually be holding our last event of the year around mid no December. Uh, please stay tuned to the website and you can get more information there. Do it. There we go. And you'll be there, Dino, right? I will be. Nah. All right. Without any further ado, I would like to welcome Victoria Clooney from Ottawa, who's a real estate investor. Um, she recently moved, for, well, recently, a little while ago from Nova Scotia, where she actually has most of her investment. So, hey, Victoria, welcome to the show. Hello, Axel, Dino, thank you for having me. Hey, Victoria, good to see you. Good to see you guys. Yeah, so we actually met through, we met digitally through the through social networks. Um, your Instagram handle is real invest and fit. So close, so close. Invest, real fit. And so ah. it's like investing in real estate and fitness. So I try to- There you go. <laughs> so I encourage everyone obviously to go and follow you. You have absolutely great content and you've been quite yep. a bit, bit of an all-star in the uh, investing in real estate at a distance. And today we can spend a little bit of time talking about that. Yeah, which, um, you know, is kind of surprising for me because that never was the intent. And so it just really was happened organically and uh, I love it. For sure. So first of all, like how in the world did you start investing in real estate? Ooh, okay. So um, I'm going to talk age. I uh, am 38 and I will start off by saying when I was 18 years old, right after my 18th birthday, I joined the military and was posted to Nova Scotia uh, shortly after, within a year or two. And so that was a good opportunity for me to figure out where I wanted to live. And I ended up buying my first property. And uh, I lived in that. It was a build. So imagine like a, a 20 year old picking out the roof color, the hardwood. <laughs> but, you know, it, I look back and I think, wow, there's two houses in Nova Scotia that I, um, essentially built from scratch and picked everything out. And I just think like, wow, a 20 year old with that kind of like, you know, I wish I knew what I know today when it comes to like aesthetics and design. So, um, but yeah, so I, I bought that house. It, I was with my boyfriend at the time we bought it together and um, the relationship did not work out. So we parted ways, we split the equity and uh, because I'd already become a homeowner, I bought my second property and um, from there, I, as the military life, you don't get to pick how long you stay somewhere. I was posted to the US within a couple of months after buying this property all by myself. 
And at that time, like you can't just turn around and sell a property. I would have lost a lot of money. So for somehow I came up with renting it. And I don't even know how I conceptually thought about this at, I think I must've been around 24 at that time. And so it's like, you think now I'm really proud of 20 year old, 24 year old for doing this. But on the flip side, I, I guess that's where I started my long distance investing because I was in the U S and I just had some friends watching the property and communicated with the, the tenants by email. Um, when I came back from the U S I intended to move back into my property. It was a bungalow, but I just didn't have the heart to kick out the family. They had a new baby. So again, just being a softy, I found a condo. I had enough down payment for a condo because this was at this time, it was only like 125,000 for this condo that I bought in Halifax, which is wow. awesome. like, I wish the prices were what they are, uh, what they were back then moved into the condo and then, you know, just kind of grew out of it over time, sold the condo, but kept my rental and then just continued to upgrade my residential, like where I'm living. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how I got started. And I guess long story short, during that time that I kept that rental, I was not, I did not consider myself an investor. It no. was just, it almost felt like a monkey on my back for, you know, a good 10 years. I was trying to manage this rental as, uh, you know, a young adult had no experience as a homeowner. Um, and then, yeah, so just dreaded that call and, but kept it new enough to keep keep it so victoria two things at that time when you decided to rent your property because you were uh, in the army and leaving for the u.s did you rent it while you were still there or you had to do it at a, at a, at a distance i rented it when i was still there so i think i had about a three-month turnaround notice when i was um, being posted out out canada we call it um And I, I think I just went on to the Nova Scotia website with there's a, a tenancy act that you can get all your forms um, used Kijiji, I think like it was so long ago, I don't even know how because I didn't know landlords, I really put an ad, like, put an ad in the newspaper. Yeah, right. <laughs> one of those yeah. smoke signals back yeah. then, like etched it in stone, but for uh, somehow That's why I say, like, I look back and I'm, I'm so proud of that, that girl, because I didn't have any resources, but was very resourceful. Yeah. Uh, and it gave me confidence, it gave me definitely confidence to know that moving forward, I can handle a lot. Mm -hmm. so, so being at a, such a young age and taking those decisions and decided to rent it, what was your mindset when you did that? And when I'm, when I asked that is, you had a tenant that was paying for, uh, was paying rent. So were you in a cash flow mindset or you were just like, I just want him to pay whatever it costs me and I want it to cost me nothing. And so it wasn't yeah. really an investment thinking. Yeah, definitely not a cash flow mindset. I was a stay above water mindset. Um, at that time, I think the interest rate that I had on that property was, so the property was two. 29. I think I got that. It was a bungalow. Um, and I think the interest was around over 5%. So I was able to rent it for 1400 back then, which I thought was amazing, but it just paid. Like I, I think I just got the break even bucks, maybe 50 bucks after mm -hmm. insurance and property tax. Um, and the funny thing is I maintain, I think I increased it to 1500, And then I maintained that for 10 years, but because the interest rates, I know, I never thought to up the rent. It was very like, it's part of the learning. It's okay. It's yes, okay. You, now you know better. Oh, do I ever, do I ever, <laughs> the, um, but the interest kept going down. So to, in my mind, I was, it was a cash cow because every year or, you know, whenever the interest rates or whenever I turned over my mortgage, renewed it interest rates were going down, my equity was growing. And so um, it worked out in the end, but absolutely. Do I wish I had like the knowledge I have now from 15 years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and and so after that like so then you're at like two houses and a condo at some point you 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 scaled and so can you kind of describe like what's your portfolio now and where is it located sure so i first of all got rid of everything before i started scaling because again with that uh resentment of being a landlord I didn't want it anymore. I was managing my properties. It was taking up too much time. um, And I was just always feeling that dread. So sold everything. um, And at that time, my husband and I, my now husband and I are together. He had a condo as well, which I convinced him to rent out when we amalgamated. (laughs) Um, So we both sold our properties. And then we had this nice big chunk of cash. And we're like, well, what do we do with this now? We have no idea what to do with this money. We knew we needed to invest it back into something, but I don't know the stock market very well, And but I do know properties. So we went right back in. Um, and then from there, I started scaling probably about like two years ago. I decided to you know, go, back, go big. And we went with a duplex in um, Halifax. So in a nice area that's like 10 minutes outside of downtown Halifax. And that's been growing great. Um, Bought another bungalow in uh, Nova Scotia. And then we bought a cottage um, and we turned that into an Airbnb. And on the cottage, there was four properties on that cottage. So that was a really good buy for us. and have my residential house. And uh, next month I'm closing on a triplex. And yeah, growing, put two offers in last night, like, you know, talk to me tomorrow and it might be different and just constantly growing. So right now I'm at, I think five properties now, if I count correct. Nice. Okay, good, uh, good, good growth. And the thing is that sometimes it's so easy to I was going to say to fall into the pressure of social media, like you got to have more doors, you got to have more doors and stuff, but like everyone's different. We shouldn't listen to other, other people's pressure and five units is already quite an achievement. And with, and, and the rates that you're at adding them right now, five years from now, you know, I'm, I'm very confident in where you'll be. Yeah, no, thanks. And it's like the, some of them are Maltese. And so it's, I agree. The door um, thing, sure, it sounds impressive when you're talking to somebody how many doors you have. But uh, at the end of the day, it, it looks different for everybody investing. Uh, people who focus on flips, I mean, they essentially might not have any doors, but yet yeah. they have a pile of money in their back pocket. So mm-hmm. um, it's all about like what what that portfolio looks like and how it's doing for you. Um, what, ty- what type of investor you are also? Are you looking for long time wealth? Are you looking for cash flow? Or, you know, it depends on what you're looking for. 100%. We did spend, so, because, I mean, we moved to Ottawa from Nova Scotia during uh, the summer, which was like the heart of the market uh, at its hottest. And we bought a nice house. So, we have been doing very well for ourselves on like the residential side. And I talk a lot about like, don't put emotion into purchasing ever. The only time that I would put emotion in is like when it's my own. Because <laughs> I was going to say your primary residence, I hate to say like, it's different. Emotional, it's different. Yeah. And so, and I treat it differently. You know, we went into bidding wars and we were the ones that won the bidding war. And so it's, it, and you have to go to that level, but that's my comfort. That's, you know, where my life is. And I have the confidence that I can make up for it on my real estate side. And we are like, we're putting a pool in the summer. Like we're very happy and comfortable, but it doesn't mean I'm stopping. Like I'm, I'm growing. And you say uh, get, getting emotion attached. I agree with that, with your, your personal home. It's the, the place you're going to spend the most time. You're going to have right. your, your family, kids are going to grow, or you can have your Christmas parties. The family's going to come. Great souvenirs are going to be built. You have to be comfortable in that thing. You, you, you were talking about social media before, Axel, uh, the pressure of social media. You listen to a Grand Cardone, who I love. Um, he's going to say, don't buy a house. Don't yeah. buy a house. Yeah, rent absolutely. your whole life exactly so yeah. i i have to disagree with that i think the, the the property your own property you have to like it and you put everything you want in it i totally agree and yeah it's life your real estate will 
be uh, paying for whatever difference you paid off your house and all that. So. Yeah. No, absolutely. That was a decision we made and we're very happy because we've always maintained keeping our residential, our primary residence separate from our rentals. And so I have grown a really nice chunk of equity in my primary residence side that I have not even touched. And who knows, maybe someday I will, but for the most part, everything has been separate, which is a great feeling when you understand creative financing, when you know how to leverage um, different scenarios in order to acquire properties, but I want to keep my mortgage payments down. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> my own personal ones. But you, you can use your HELOC to lend your money and make more money. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Cool. Like, you know, there's so many different scenarios. Yeah. And that's a great thing I find about real estate is that at first I just always thought like, you know, you have to buy and then you rent it, but it doesn't really pay anything. And then there's so many ways to skin the cat. And a lot of people say, well, you know, they don't want to say they're intimidated by investing in real estate. So they'll just say, well, I just don't want to have to deal with like clogged toilets, which is the most ridiculous answer ever. Uh, but you know, whether you do flips, whether you do rent to own, whether you do buy and hold, whether you just like develop land and resell it by the time you have your permit, like you have to have, never have to deal with a tenant and yet you can like triple your money. Like, and, and those are like three or five examples, but I'm sure between the three of us, we could come up with another 15. Oh yeah. And like, we'll, I'll circle us back to the long distance investing because what I have learned in such a short period of time, now that I'm no longer in Nova Scotia and I left my properties there, I have to rely on my property manager, my team, my realtors, my lawyers, everybody. And it like the weight that's been lifted off my shoulders because I don't have to deal with it. It's, it's honestly, it's been a game changer and it's priceless. And being long distance forces you yeah. to not deal with toilets and yeah. tenants. And so that's been such a good benefit that I've, I've realized and why I'm going to continue with the long distance investing, because again, I have like so much trust with my team. Totally yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. to on awesome. others and, and delegate and like we do flips also. So, but we, we deal with JCs. Uh, nice. If you stick to say, okay, we have a team in our construction company. But the thing is, is my team can only do one property at a time. So what you want to do, you want to deal with partners, GCs, give them the project, they yep. take care of it, you yeah. trust them, yep. and explode after that. That's right. So and that's work, how you scale. Yeah. You work on your business and not in your business. Mm -hmm. For you, Victoria, I I'm pretty sure where you, the best for you and your business is for you when you're buying properties because you're good at it. So unclogging toilets and tenants and all that, that's my thing. It's not my specialty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> does that read <laughs> does, yeah for sure. no, no offense but i'm not surprised and again like people who are intimidated always say like i don't want to deal with tenants i don't want to like unclog toilets at midnight it's like i've never had to do that oh, like stop I, you have like i felt so ridiculous when i was you know in my early 20s and i was getting phone calls from grown men to come over because like the water was looking funny or because the, the laundry, I remember the, uh, a washer um, unhooked. And so it started leaking through to the, the basement. And so there, I mean, I am the landlord, they are calling me, but I'm coming over there to check it out because I have no property manager. Mm -hmm. And then I'm assessing and trying to figure out who I'm going to call, but yeah. Oh, it's like, it's not my thing. No. And the thing is that half of it, sorry, do you know, half of it is common sense. Like I'm, I, I'm just imagining this old man that calls you because the, the laundry, the, 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 I guess it's the evacuation pipe, like disconnected. And it's like, well, yes. just put it, put it back, you know. like screw it back. Like it's not that, no, but seriously, do you know, just put it back. Yeah. Yeah. I was really lucky being in the military because like we have the, we have tradesmen. And so I had a lot of connection and a lot of support, which was amazing. And so it, but again, that goes with the, being the, being resourceful networking. Uh, but this was before social media. And, and this is what I'm finding now, even if I'm not connecting so much with like physical people that can support me, I'm now doing it virtually. And it's just, Oh my gosh, I can't like, I wish I knew. I wish I knew this. So if anybody's listening out there and they are timid about social media, that was me 
for sure. And I still am for my personal account, but when you start treating it like a business, Mm -hmm. the posts have purpose and you're not being like, you should be genuine, but feel free to actually post and not feel apprehensive or judged because people appreciate it. I have no idea how many people reach out and and say such nice things and ask questions. And and I'm so happy to answer it because it, it lets me know that I'm adding value, which is my purpose and the intent and, uh, you know, helps people move that needle a little bit. Mm -hmm. You actually just made a really good point about the, the, I'm going to say the military mentality. And I just wanted to see with you, like, I perceive what you just said as it's been ingrained in you the I will not quit, I will not abandon, I will figure it out. I will no fail. The, there's what? It's it's no fail. Like you yeah, have, it cannot fail no, and I cannot quit. Not, that's right. And, and I was gonna say, like, and it might actually be a little harder for you to answer because it's probably second nature for you. But in what ways do you think that that military culture, so to speak, has helped you in real estate? Because it's a fantastic way to think. Oh, it's uh it's so helpful. And it, um, it's funny that I struggle answering it because I actually help people realize their potential in the military. My job is uh, uh, to help people transition from the military and uh, career counselor. So I'm all the time, I'm talking to military people to tell them the skills that you have, regardless of your occupation, are just so valuable yeah. on the outside world because I mean, you can look at a scenario and a situation, and then you have that like no quit, no fail mindset, the organization skills, the communication skills, the discipline, the teamwork. I mean, all of those things are ingrained to you from the day that you join, the day that you go off to basic training, that is what they teach you. And Mm -hmm. so for me, I come with 20 years now of experience in, in the military. And so I... I live and breathe it. Like this yeah. is my life is very disciplined. I feel like I'm speaking with David Goggins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, he, uh, he <laughs> would be too shame. It, uh, yeah, he's pretty, he's intense. He's amazing, but it is a very, I'm very grateful for it. Um, and then I, from my background, I, I'm in psychology. And so it, uh, it adds like an element of, of human <laughs> Yeah. So I feel like it's a nice uh, combination because I have that that human side, the empathy, the uh, interpersonal skills that maybe military would not have. Um, there might be a stigma about that because we can be so robotic at times. So yeah, I just I feel grateful for the experiences that I've had just in my like day job yeah. to set me up for this. Those skills must help you a lot when you're uh, negotiating a property or trying to buy a property with, with negotiation with a seller, a human being, a person, you know? Yeah, so. it does. It's, um, I, I've, I have a baby face. And so sometimes when I walk into a situation, uh, especially like a negotiation, there's a bias that gets put immediately when they meet me. And so um, I can use it to my advantage at times because I recognize that that most likely is going to be how I'm perceived. Um, And then, of course, that adds its own challenges. But I think if I didn't have the background that I have or had been in like the leadership positions that I've been in, um, then it would be a lot more challenging for me. And now it becomes uh, an added bonus. So I, I really... I've used that a lot to my advantage. Yeah. So you should. And, <laughs> and, and, and that's one of the things like I find there aren't nearly enough women investing in real estate. And I actively want to promote women investing in real estate for a number of reasons. Um, and one of them is just, I'm going to be, you know, totally transparent and honest. My wife has always liked real estate. She's more and more active and she is doing fantastic. And I just, when I just see like women negotiate much better than men in some ways, like way better. Absolutely. For sure. Like, again, even if without that emotion side, it's the, uh, I mean, we think differently, just biologically, we are different. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, we have very like communication and we pick up on cues and, a uh, different way that you are, you might say something and you interpret it differently than I would interpret it. So mm-hmm. 
Absolutely. So. And, and just, I'm just going to share a little story. Like we, we closed on a property this summer that we put under contract last fall. It was a long time. And one Sunday she was like, oh no, I want to go renegotiate with her. Like I find I'm paying too much. She already had negotiated really, she was, it was at 435. And she's like, no, I'm going to go back and negotiate. And it was like Sunday, five o'clock. And I loved it because it felt like the world was upside down because I stayed home with the kids and prepared dinner. She went over there to negotiate and she came back and she's like, yeah, I got it down to 400. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? How did you do that? I was like, that's impossible. And I was like, and what I admire about her and about women in general is that in some ways they have a lot less, I was going to say bias in terms of like what's acceptable or not. Cause I don't know if I would have even dared to bring such a, a big decrease in the price. And she was like, I was like, well, how do you do this? And she just said, well, because of the financing, the place is vacant. I was going to have to put $70,000 more. So I just told her we were going to split it in half. So that's 35K, so 400. And she agreed. And I was like, wow, wow, I <laughs> admire you. And, and that's why, like, going back to, to women in real estate, I find there's not enough women in, in, in leadership positions, investing in, in, in real estate and, and, and all that. And so I, I want to be in a world where there's actually the world is actually led by more women. There you go. That's amazing. Yeah, no, it's very, um, I mean, it's, it's funny because in, in like my relationship, my marriage, my husband's like a, like a big fit, strong guy. And he's a, a bodyguard by trade. That's what he does. Um, but I'm the one that goes in with the negotiations and, and makes those decisions, those business decisions, because that's where my strengths are. Yeah. And all, like, he's amazing because he is so supportive and, and, you know, is that partner in all aspects because he's the one cooking dinner often and, and cleaning. He might get upset that I'll tell this, but like he okay. does that and supports so that I can thrive and yeah. have the time to do this. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think like communication is so important. And then those relationships and how you make those people feel. And so when you're in a negotiation, you don't necessarily have to go in as like that, you know, tough minded, hard, the bully, driving, whatever, right? Just come in, find out what the seller, like why they want to sell, what what's their intent and what's their mm -hmm. purpose? How can you support them and make this easier for them? So that's sort of mindset that I go into is like, how can I make this easier for you? I'm yeah. very motivated and let's figure it out because yeah. we meet, we can find that happy medium and it works out. Like that's the, the beautiful part is that they want to work with you mm -hmm. and that's what helps. Mm -hmm. And kind of establishing at the beginning of the conversation, like I always want to, to me to be treated fairly and I will always treat you fairly. And is it fair for us to count on a good communication between each other uh, and, and stuff like that? And I also believe in, you know, it's, you create win-win situations regardless and, and telling them and identifying, Hey, what's important for you? Maybe you may not ask it this way, but is it the price? Is it a quick close? Is it the conditions? Is it any of this? Yeah, absolutely. There's a book, um, never split the difference. Oh, it, yeah. and you know, it's funny, I, I ran into another investor friend of mine up while I was traveling today. And she picked up that book too. And told me she's like, I love this book. I've read it twice. Now I use it with my husband. I use it with my son. <laughs> I use it with the people like when I'm negotiating because it is so uh, straightforward, intuitive, but just it, it allows you to step back and take that emotion out of it. And it is calculated. It is a little manipulative, manipulative, but if you're coming from a good place, then it's, uh, I think it's great because it lets that seller know that you actually care about, you know, them and what they want. And when people feel that, then they're much more open to, to give you that information that will help you negotiate to get that deal. Do, do you use uh, you have a, a great vibe and people's person and all that? Do, do you share or tend to feel that on social media also? Yeah, I think that has helped me quite a bit with the um, um, growing and like meeting and networking because um, I, I did move here in July. And so I feel like the new kid on the block, but I have like immersed myself and I, I actually do like it. I didn't think I would. But now that I feel comfortable with, with my group, my people, and then any new people that come in, um, I do genuinely enjoy it. And so I think that 
I think that that shows, I hope it does. Um, and I feel, uh, I feel valued and I value everybody that um, comes across my account and talks to me. And yeah, it does. I'm really appreciative for my education because I think very clearly often about like mindset and people are really interested in mindset. And so that's an area that I, I'm very strong in understanding and applying and then to be able to just communicate that, it, uh, it feels good. I wish I was more savvy when it actually came to Canva. You know what I mean? Like putting posts out. I was saying that to my husband this morning. I have so much, so many ideas, but the time that it takes. So uh, I, I'm talking to you, Dino. I am going to outsource. I'm going to uh, start looking for somebody that could do um, some little projects for me, but I still want to be at the helm. Like I want to yeah. engage. I don't want to lose that, but it'd be great if I said, this is my idea. Can you put this down? But mm-hmm. I actually have a VA that I work with that does all the advertisement, the videos for one of my companies. And wow. I don't know how this guy does it. Yeah. I just like shoot him the idea. And he's a VA. He, he must be like in Europe or something like that. Mm-hmm. And- the only like uh, chat and emails and sometimes I, I send him like pictures or stuff like that just to give him an idea. And the guy just does it as I want each time. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. That's, that's what I mean. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not creative like that. Believe me, I'm not very good at that. And Canva and all that you were saying, I, I totally agree. You get a VA, get one you're going to like to work with. Yeah. Not cost a lot of money and no. everything's done at a distance uh, virtually and uh, those people are good at it. Let those people work at it. You totally agree. What you're good at. Absolutely. No, absolutely. I'll bring another book up. Is that who, not how. Yeah. Classic. I have a huge danger. Like when you're such a, I'm a do it yourself or like I, I figure everything out. I like muscle through everything. And when I read that book, it really opened my eyes to outsourcing to grow. I mean, if you want to reach your highest potential, you need to, you need support. You need people to do what they're good at, but with your stamp on it. And Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I need to just apply it. It's funny. You mentioned that book because it actually, I read it this year and it had a a big impact on me and, and reminding me of, well, why I'm doing this and how to achieve it. And it's just, delegating and I kind of used to be the same like oh I can figure it out and I'll do this and I'll do that it's like no waste of time you can find someone who will do it for cheap we'll do it much better than you anyway so like you can sleep better at night boom absolutely and it's worth it like the if you think about if you're held back because of the money aspect of it you have to think from that business perspective of well if I pay 12 15 an hour I don't know what the cost is maybe it's 20 maybe I'm super cheap but if I pay 20 bucks an hour for something, then I, my returns are going to be maybe five times more mm-hmm. than, and I'm more expensive than 20 bucks an hour. Yeah. Right. So yeah. He, he, it's that shift of the mindset that I still have to work on for the things that I'm very like, controlling about. Mm-hmm. Cool. So we're actually getting towards the end here. And I know I, I mentioned your Instagram handle, but where can people find out more about you? Well, Instagram is where, like I spend the, the uh, majority of my efforts in. And so invest real fit. Uh, thanks to Dino. I have attempted TikTok. <laughs> I'm not sure I can't, I will not give uh, well, I'll be on there all the time, but we'll see. We'll try to do that. Um, I'm on clubhouse too. I don't know. Do you guys use that? Yeah. I've used it a few times, but I've never hosted events or anything. like that. <sighs> same, same. So, I mean, if you really want to get a hold of me, Instagram for now. Boom. And yeah. I'm going to see if I can, if I can say it again, investor real fit. You're so close. <laughs> <laughs> what? What was it? Just invest. You're so close though. <sighs> invest real fit. Yay, That's I got right, it. Right. People that are listening, before we were recording, he tried like eight times. I know. Know. It's been a long week. Whatever. Oh, all, okay. all good. Hey, uh, Victoria, thank you so much for joining. This was uh, this was really fun. And I really like your your, your vibe and, and your and your mindset. So I think uh, others will, uh, will benefit from it. And um, Dino, thanks, man. Thanks for joining. 
we had a great time once yeah. again. Thanks, Victoria. <laughs> it was great meeting you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I like I love the podcast. I've been listening to it now, and uh, yeah, I'm just appreciative that uh, you want to talk to me. You know, the reason for this podcast is, yeah, we could in, we could be interviewing people who have 500 doors, 1,000 doors, and build skyscrapers. But the vast majority of us, of, you know, we're still small investors, is people like you and me who started years ago, who have like five, 10, seven properties, or even three. And that's why this podcast was created, to really share all those stories of people like us so that people who want to start actually get inspired. Because I can't relate to someone who's got 1,000 doors. No, you nailed it. I was just going to say we are relatable um, mm -hmm. because of like this point and people, you know what, and I'll, and I'll sum up with this, but then just like one or two properties could be life changing for people. And that was for me. I mean, yeah. now I, I see that big picture, but honestly, I was very happy and comfortable with one or two. And so for anybody who wants to get in, just like don't think about needing those 40 doors. Think about that one because that will be uh, that will be very valuable for you in time. Mm -hmm. What a what a fabulous way to end! Thank you both for joining. And as usual, everyone um, connect next week. We'll have another fun interview. Thank you again. Get into the action. Go make some offers. Go educate yourself. And we will talk to you next week. Thank you very much. And bye bye. Peace. Mm -hmm.